Reality is starting to release their own upgrades from Factory for the Ender 3. Today we're going to test their new main board to see if it really is safe and silent. Previously, I upgraded my Ender 3's main board to this MKS Gen L. This allowed me to have several advantages. One, it's got a bigger microcontroller, so I can fit in more Marlin features. It's got a bunch more input-output pins, which makes it easier to connect other upgrades. I was able to add a color touchscreen with an MKS TFT. And most importantly, I could add these 2130 silent stepper motor drivers. I'm happy with it, but I'm an experienced 3D printer user and I can appreciate that some people don't want to stray away from Creality products or go through all of these extra steps. Well, the good news is Creality now has their own mainboard upgrade with version 1.1.4. It claims to be safe and silent and it should be coming on the newer Ender 3s, but the question is, is it a worthwhile upgrade if you've already got one of these? I purchased my mainboard directly from the Creality shop and it's interesting to note that it says it's for the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, and the Ender 5. It's clearly stated that it has thermal runaway protection enabled, and that it has a silent function, although it doesn't go into any details on how it achieves that. As for customized and non-standard matching, I have no idea what that's about, and there's very little info otherwise. The two main claims is that it comes with thermal runaway protection enabled, as well as having silent stepper motor drivers. Let's start by bench testing the thermal runaway protection. First things first, the board arrives well packaged in a box, but there are no instructions. When I powered it with an LCD attached, we can see that it comes pre-flashed with Ender 3 Pro firmware. Frustrated by the lack of info, I pulled off the heatsink to reveal TMC 2208s as the stepper motor driver that's going to make this thing quiet. I also noticed R150 sense resistors instead of the usual R110 which explains the higher than expected VREF I found on all four axes. Now onto the safety testing. I've made complete videos on this before, but thermal runaway occurs when the thermistor that measures the temperature is separated from the hot end heater that delivers the temperature. Even once the heater is up to temp, the firmware doesn't realize this and keeps the power on, sometimes with catastrophic results. Here's my bench testing setup. I have a thermistor plugged in for the hot end, but no heater attached. It simulates thermal runaway perfectly because it thinks the temperature should be going up, but it won't be measured. If the firmware is set up correctly, it should recognize this and shut things down pretty quickly. I'm connected via USB with the program Pronterface and I've set the temperature. You'll notice that the LCD reflects that the target is 210 and it starts to deliver 22.5 volts to the hot end heater. We can see on the LCD that it's still only reading 21 degrees, so this should trigger thermal runaway protection in about half a minute. Okay, and we have an error coming out on the console, but as we can see, the LCD is completely unchanged, and most importantly, despite the error message saying that the system would be stopped, it's still delivering 22.5 volts until I manually turn off the heater. Although the problem is correctly identified, it doesn't actually do anything to protect you from fire in the event that this happens. When I connected via console, I saw that the version of Marlin was 1.1.8, which is new enough to have the feature, but clearly something is amiss. That is a big failure right there, and it's really disappointing. Please learn from this that you shouldn't always trust manufacturer claims, or what you read on a message board, instead you should get out and test things yourself so you know for sure. Next up is installation. I had to uninstall my MKS Gel L for this, but even that was pretty straightforward. It only took about 10 minutes to unplug everything from that board and plug it into this one. If you're upgrading from the 113 board, it's simply unplug and plug in in the exact locations. Here's a diagram to help you in case you get stuck, which you can find the download link for in the description. Because my printer was so modified, I had to temporarily reinstall my old non-touch LCD, as well as reinstall an end stop. Yes, the BL Touch is still sitting here, but it's not actually connected or doing anything. This board comes with the firmware already flashed, so therefore the printer is ready to operate. We're gonna start by testing the noise. I like to test the noise while homing because it's consistent, repeatable, and there's no fans running.
As you can see in here, the homing process is very quiet. You can hear the background talking in the next room more than you can hear the stepper motors. Well, it's definitely much, much quieter, so a big tick there. And as you might expect, the noise level is exactly the same as my MKS Gen L and when I had 22.8 drivers fitted there. In conjunction with my Hero custom mount and my 5 volt Noctua fan, it's very, very quiet, almost silent until the print really gets going. When it gets to layer two and turns on the part cooling fan, it all of a sudden seems so much louder than before. One small downside that I noticed is that the mainboard cooling fan seems to be wired in conjunction with the part cooling fan, which for the most part won't really present you any problems. I printed out a bunch of these Max Megapod leg links and that represented about 15 hours of test printing. The results for those turned out really good. PMC 2208 stepper motor drivers eliminate any zebra stripe surface artifacts. So that means if you were previously running TL smoothers, you don't need them anymore. And you also don't need stepper motor dampers because they're so much quieter. In my opinion, this board is quite good value at around 40 US dollars, which is cheaper than buying an MKS Gen L and four separate 2208 stepper motor drivers. The only problem then is the lack of advertised thermal runaway protection. But when I went to address that, I found a pleasant surprise. Now there is a place in Vanilla Marlin to specify 2208 in standalone mode, but I've shown in a previous video that this isn't necessary and it will run without this change. To put on a newer version of Vanilla Marlin, I expected that I would need to flash a bootloader first. I thought I'd try my luck however, so I connected the printer to my computer via USB and tried to upload without doing this step. Amazingly, it uploaded first go. This board comes with a bootloader and therefore updating firmware is as simple as plugging it in and sending the code via USB. Just to show that this version of the firmware works, I printed another two of these parts, the result being identical. Do I recommend this board? The answer is definitely yes, but there is one major condition. I only recommend it if you're then going to update to the vanilla Marlin or the latest from TH3D. And without a bootloader, that is surprisingly easy. Now this is not the only upgrade kit Creality is selling for the Ender 3. They now have their own BL Touch set, which I've got my hands off and I'll be testing very soon. Do you think this is a more attractive upgrade? Do you think it presents an easier path than swapping the mainboard out for something that's not from Creality? I'd love to read your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.